Hi, and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. Now, you are worthy of love, care, and respect. Now, when I say that, if you experience some kind of internal resistance, pushback, or discomfort, this teaching is going to be for you. You'll discover why you've been closing off from and rejecting love, care and respect in your life and what you need to do starting today to step into your own true worth. Okay, David, now I know this is a really common issue with your clients. Why is it that we find it so hard to believe that we are worthy of love, care and respect? Well, you're right, Alex, it's very common. And it highlights one of the things you, we talk often on the video of the carousel of despair. And this is another part of the inner child's mind, what I call the maze of confusion. So one of the most important things in this video that we're going to do now is to deconstruct what we're talking about. So first of all, if we're talking about worth, self-worth and value, well, my name for that is Shen. And I'm saying that you have intrinsic, inherent, innate worth and value. This is not something that's given to you. You don't get presented a box of worth when you're born. The midwife doesn't hold you up in the delivery room and say, quick, can somebody give this baby some worth? You have inherent worth. And when we're children, we don't understand that. We believe that worth and value is something that's given to us or something we have to earn. Okay, so that's kind of our value. And what you're saying is through how we are brought up, either through parenting, family dynamics, schooling, and society in general, we are taught as individuals that we have to prove our value. We have to prove our worth. It's not something that we already have, and, and also, more importantly, that can't be taken away from us. That's really important, Alex, because it, it, if you listen to maybe your language, you'll use the words like validation, I need validation, I need approval, I need somebody to give me that reassurance. And what you're doing there is you're moving your responsibility, your accountability for something you already have, And you've given it to somebody else that they will give you. And this is where it basically fundamentally gets very confusing. Because they can't. No one can give you value, even if they stroked you on the back of the head and say, oh, you're wonderful, you're fantastic, you're the best person I've ever met, you're so perfect. There's a little voice inside of you goes, oh, yeah, I don't believe that. So it can't work. And so this on a fundamental level is so important. And that's why the Tao is called it Shen, S-H-E-N, Shen. Every child has Shen. If you have your own physical, biological children, did you have to give, present, give them a present of value? Has your child got inherent value? Of course they have, and so have you. And this is a fundamental misunderstanding. We've done many videos and teachings in the archives on this, something you really have to think about and clear this confusion. I think, David, the, the I guess it's like the eternal human problem that we have living in our society is that we this concept of inherent, authentic, value, shen, our spiritual self, our higher self, which is the most important thing about us. We're not taught about the shape, size, form, qualities of this as a concept, but we, what we are taught about as we grow up in society, through schooling, through the media, is value as represented by status, as represented by education, as represented by career, as represented by money, as represented by our partners or the friends we keep. So, um, and we, and what we look like, all of those things is very elaborately told to us and pushed upon us as concept. But this more ephemeral, mysterious thing which you're saying 
has a far greater value which you are born with and you'll die with and no one regardless of the life experiences you have regardless of the life choices you make that value does not change that's right Alex and you said something when you was explaining that was very important you use and introduce the word spiritual and I think this innate value is spiritual and by this I don't mean something outside of yourself I'm not talking about something about angels or crystals or religion. I'm talking about the spirit, your innate spirit. And if you're still not grasping what I'm saying, if you've got a physical child or even a member of the family, they're not just the physicality of the color of their hair, the color of their eyes, how they walk, how they talk. There's something that is far more about them. And this is what the Taoists call Shen. And then you went on to introduce the problem. There's two factors going on here. There's what I would call this innate personal spirituality, Shen, and there's society's value. Now, the problem is, as you quite rightly said, we are almost bombarded with society's value, how you look, how you sound, what kind of car you drive, what career, how much you're earning, This is society's value. And if you ground yourself in society's value, this adds to the maze of confusion because society's value is always changing. Even in your lifetime, society's value, the way you look, the color of your hair, the size of your family, your income, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. This is like building your life on shifting sand. This is society's value. And so many of my clients try and ground themselves in what other people think, what other people say, what are trying to please them, trying to conform. And this creates a very spiritual, fundamental pulling apart with who you are. And I'm saying in this teaching, it's far more important for you and the ones you love in your family if you're bringing up children to absolutely give them this teaching. Your innate value doesn't change. doesn't change by the way you look. doesn't change if you lose your hair or you've got a big head of hair. Your innate value doesn't change. And as you said, this is not given to you. No one can come along with a basket of value and give it to you. And no one can take it away from you. So we've established that self-doubt about our own value kind of begins when we're children. And would you say in your experience working with clients, David, that if we have experienced some sort of childhood trauma or childhood abuse or very uh, unhappy relationships, that that has compounded our our self-doubt because we are more inclined to believe we're not valuable, we're not lovable. It's almost like it's turned up the dial on our self-doubt. Well, now you're talking about what we call the vow, that really deep inner thought that when we're doing the golden thread, we're always trying to get to that vow. And when you do the golden thread and you get past the, I'm not good enough, I can't cope, I'm unlovable, doubt, you'll find a much deeper thought is there's something missing or there's something wrong with me. Every client has a slight different variation, but there's something missing with me. And as you said, if you believe there's something wrong or there's something missing with you, and then as you go through life and you meet life's challenges, what you call traumas, And that could just be someone bullying you at school or saying you're too fat or you're too thin or you're too short or you're too tall. What that does, as you say, turns up the dial. The way I see it, it adds another layer and a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer, like the layers of an onion. And this is what I said at the beginning. It adds 
to the maze of confusion. So you have all these many layers on top. And that's why the golden thread process that we practice and teach and show you is taking away those layers. Because until you get to that core vow, V-O-W, the vow, something you said to yourself, and this might be as early as six, seven, eight, when perhaps you're parents didn't give you the attention that you believe you desired or they favored another member of your family or you didn't get into the main group at school you wasn't in the in crowd and then you say that very kind of it's like a knife going right into your heart there must be something wrong with me I'm not enough there's something missing. And then you layer on the layers. And that really is one of the jobs when clients come to me. We have to peel back those layers, which is very difficult because those layers then have almost become your identity. You see yourself in those layers. You see yourself that you have got doubt, that you do need validation, you do need approval, you do need to pee to people, please. And these are the layers you have to peel back because you have to get back to the source, the fountainhead or the first domino. You have to get back to that vow. So before we dig into the solution, I just want to go back to where we started. So we've talked about value and that... so. If we believe we are not valuable, does that also mean we believe we're not lovable? Which then in turn means we are not, we believe we are not worthy of care and respect. Is that the kind of order of the kind of domino effect that goes on here for people? Yes, so it's it's good to talk about the domino effect in this teaching. So the first domino is the vow. There's something missing or there's something wrong with me. And you would have your own variation on that theme. The second layer is what I call the three lies. So if you've ever said one or all three of these lies to yourself, you know there's something deeper. I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable or I'm unworthy. And that then is the second domino or the second layer. And then you start building on that. Now you look for confirmation bias what I call self-fulfilling prophecies. You look to prove, you discount all the things that prove that you've done really well. You discount that and you look for the instances or what people say or the way they look at you to prove and that you're not good enough or there's something missing in with you. And then you layer on layer after layer after layer. And when we teach the golden thread process, That's why the golden thread process is so powerful, even life-changing, because what you're doing is you're peeling back the layers and you're finding the truth, because this is built on a lie. This is why I call it the the three lies. The three lies, I'm not good enough. I've been doing this work for 45 years and no one has ever been able to give me the evidence that they're not good enough. They'll give me the evidence of what happens when they believe they're not good enough, but they'll never give me the evidence of what makes them not good enough. I ask them simple questions. Were you born not good enough? Did you come out of the womb? And who picked you up and says, well, this baby's not good enough? This is a nonsense. This does not make sense. And you have to clear this confusion. I think, David, I just want to hold you on, the, on a point here. If we do, if we believe we're not worthy, if we believe we're not lovable or deserving of love, does that mean, therefore, that we allow ourselves to be disrespected by other people, that we allow other people, that we don't care for ourselves? So, what I'm saying is, are the is the the, the consequence of all these layers of self doubt, self disrespecting ourselves the consequence of that is we put up with people disrespecting us we don't care for ourselves or we don't expect that others should care and love us in a way that is appropriate we don't put down appropriate boundaries 
in in our relationships or friendships or in our work situations? Are they the kind of natural day-to-day consequences of fundamentally doubting ourselves? Yes, so to answer your question clearly, first of all, you start with disrespecting yourself. Yeah. Then you're looking at some kind of a wishful thinking that you want some magical fairy godmother to step in and to prove you wrong. And so when you disrespect yourself and then when other you don't like other people disrespecting you or not giving you approval or not validating you, but in a way, and this is where it gets a bit complicated and the confusion starts off, in a way, it's kind of proving your point. Mm. And so, as in a way, you can kind of say, well, there you are, that's evidence. Look how they treat me. I Look how they don't respect me. And you're proving your own point without being accountable and responsible for respecting and cherishing and nourishing yourself first. You want that to come out of somewhere else. I call it a rescue. You want somebody to kind of float into your life. And it is like a a fairy godmother and to wave her magic wand and somehow you respect yourself and then everybody else respects you and you get elevated. And this is where it gets more and more confusing because it's wrong to say you actually like people disrespecting you. Of course, you don't like it. But in a way, it proves your point. And the part of the mind that we call the inner child likes to be right, likes to be proven correct. And so the inner child will say to yourself, there you are, look, that's evidence. They wouldn't talk like that if they really valued you. If you were an important person, if they thought you were really good, they wouldn't talk to you like that. But of course, they talk to you the way they want to talk to you. It's more important how you talk to you. And I think, David, this is, we're at the fundamental knob of this teaching now, this point about respecting ourselves and that if we don't believe we are worthy of love, care and respect and therefore give love, care and respect to ourselves, how can we possibly expect that from other people and nor should we because it's our responsibility first and foremost to love care and respect ourselves but David I want to ask you when you say disrespecting yourself what do you actually mean by that what are we doing wrong well that's what I was going to go to that's why the vow is so important when you are saying there is something missing the vow, something missing, something wrong with me. You are doubting your spirituality. In that moment, you are disrespecting yourself because you're creating a separation. You're allowing, you're doubting your essence. You're doubting who you really are. You're doubting that spirituality of Shen within you. This is what the disrespect is. And then, From that, then comes the lies, then comes the layers, then comes the consequences, then comes the self-fulfilling prophecies and the confirmation bias. And it, it is like a line of dominoes. And you're building your life on that first fundamental vow that there's something missing in you. You need something from someone else. Someone else, and it's normally parents or family, have to give you something. You have to earn it. And then you'll be whole. You're already whole. You're already a oneness. That can't be taken away from you. As you said, from the moment you come into the world and to the moment you leave this world, that fundamental value and worth, Shen, never changes. It cannot change. And that's the disrespect when you disrespect that basic essence of who you are as a spiritual and human being. And that's what makes the Wu Wei wisdom model slightly different to other coaching models. At the core of this is this spirituality. And again, I'm going to say, not in a kind of a external, we're not talking about anything external, we're talking about your innate spirit. There is no one in the universe like you. You are unique. 
And I'm sorry, if that's not good enough for you, I really don't know what is good enough for you. And if you doubt that, and if you look and you compare yourself with another unique person, I mean, this really doesn't make sense. And that's when you fall into the layers that we call CCJ, the carousel of despair, you know, never being happy, always striving, looking for this validation, looking outside of yourself. You're wasting your energy and you're off your authentic and true journey. You have wings. You have spiritual wings. Why don't you open your wings and fly? That's what we're saying. They're there. Somebody else can't give you these wings. You can't earn these wings. You have them already. And that's the disrespect. It's almost like you look at your wings and saying, these wings aren't good enough. Their wings are much better than mine. Instead of opening your wings and flying to reach your true potential. Mm, thank you, David. And I guess this, <clears throat> this form of disrespect on a, on a day-to-day basis, this is about our negative self-talk. Uh, doubting ourselves in our daily activities, putting ourselves down in how we, in that inner narrative. It's about not putting in place boundaries. It's about all the ways that we, tiny ways that we sacrifice ourselves when we say yes to things, when we really want to say no, when we don't speak our truth because we're worried about what other people are going to say, when we don't practice self-love because we're expecting other people to give us a love. All the things that we've done so many teachings on, which I can put links in the show notes to. It's really about cultivating this self-respect. And that's where the, the love, care and value comes from. Yes. And all those things you said are the high level. That's mm. the last domino. Uh, feeling sorry for yourself, poor me, the world's against me, not exercising correctly, not eating correctly, always looking at what we call CCJ, heavily criticizing yourself, criticizing other people, comparing, being judgmental, being judgmental about yourself and about other people. And so this is much higher level, but this is the same line of dominoes as when you go back to the original vow. And you won't get the, you won't, if you work on this, I call it the froth. Most of my clients will come to me with a froth, the top layer. But as you start to peel back, you see this core and you can't sort out the top layer while you still got the the first domino wrong. You've got to get back to that vow. Wonderful. And I will also put a link in the show notes to a long form teaching we've done on the childhood vow as well. So you can learn more about that. I really hope you benefited from this teaching. If you did, please do let us know and perhaps share it with someone else who you think it may also help. David works every week with clients all over the world by Zoom video call on exactly these sort of issues. If you'd like to learn more about David's one-to-one consultations, please also check out the show notes. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.